Hey folks, Steve here with another Dark Valley video. We're going to be looking at turn 4 today, at least turn 4. We'll see if I can get uh, things scrunched down enough to do turn 5 as well. Uh, we are heading into the mixed weather turns and then uh, mud. Then it's going to be good old snowy winter here in 1941. So, uh, the pressure is on to make some gains before the winter kicks in. And... Uh, like in every video, I want to take a few minutes at the beginning of this video to talk to some mistakes or some clarifications made between the recording of that one and just other feedback and information that's come through. So, uh, firstly, I want to take it all the way back to setup for a second, and there were some comments in previous videos about doing setup incorrectly, and it turns out I am in the wrong, and that the setup um, for the Russian units in certain cities is such that uh, while I'm sort of lawyering my way through the verbiage of the setup rule, the intention is to have it be that when you put units in the city, you uh, then change the stacking and you are meant to be leaving the four, you know, if you can, four combat units in the city, not pull even more out like I did in setup. And so for me, that just means that the Soviets in various places got like one extra hex of movement. Not really a big deal, but that is the proper way to do setup, so I guess watch out for that. Don't don't overthink it like Steve did, or, well, I don't even know that I overthought it. That's just how I read the rules, so um, it may, maybe a wording change is necessary for clarification purposes in the errata. I don't know. Um, other thing. Okay, so in the last video, we cleared Riga. And the question was, could, could we retreat the Soviet armies past the completely surrounded uh, hexes through the river port to the Gulf of Riga and then get up to Leningrad? So, you know, what, just to show, again, what, why that was sort of a weird contention, uh, was that Riga itself has a port symbol there, and it has that, you know, that, that river that connects to the sea, but you can put, and we did have, axis units that were on both sides of that river when the retreat occurred. So I had asked uh, Ted Racer, uh, what, what's the dealio on this one? And it turns out that those units could not have retreated, which makes sense to me. I mean, I, I, I think that totally makes sense, that's logical, and, and that's what the rules should say. Just unfortunately, the rules themselves don't really uh, help clarify this situation very well and, and maybe is something that should be added as additional erratic clarification. Um, and so I had ended up retreating those units over here to the Leningrad line uh, and placed them there. Well, since they couldn't have retreated, I've simply removed them. So they did not get to retreat to Leningrad port. They did not get to move in to join the Leningrad defense line. They were simply eliminated and, uh, well... That, that's all we got. So, um, sort of a bummer, uh, obviously, but uh, not the worst thing in the world um, for the Soviets, I guess. I mean, you know, they haven't lost, uh, they haven't lost Moscow yet, which I guess is the real important thing here. Um, and then, let's see, a couple other things just worth throwing out there. Um, uh, folks have commented that I've been using my Air Force from Bombardment too much, and that leaves them to be done uh, sooner in the turn than is ideal. Well, I, I agree, though I think I was doing things to my desire here, which was, uh, you know, my goal had been to pick off Soviet units that projected Zox to make it easier for my Panzer units to uh, penetrate Soviet lines and create encirclements. And... Uh, I think, really, I was rolling hot most of the time up until the recent turns where I was rolling fives and sixes pretty routinely, and it was just awesome getting to pick units off the board just simply via that action. And we got so many bombardments with uh, the um, ability to use them every combat chit that I got a little greedy in using them. Now, uh, now that most of those units have been eliminated, or even uh, they'll eventually be all withdrawn, the single step, uh, Zoc mechanized infantry, all, all those are going to be gone. Um, and so that a bombardment is going to have, really in my mind, more limited value. So we will be shifting 
the use of our Air Force to air supply and uh, ground support rather than ground striking bombardment. Um, so yeah, for sure, uh, folks were pointing that out. I, I agree, now is the time uh, to shift the, the strategy here. Maybe should have changed it a little bit earlier, but again, it was getting greedy. So uh, we'll, we'll look to do that. And what that'll mean is we'll be throwing in an extra four combat factors to a lot of combats, and that may end up allowing us to conduct um, more combat spread out and achieve high combat ratios because of that. Um, so something we'll look to take care of uh, in this turn. Um, though, <laughs> I guess the problem is now the weather is going to be uh, impeding our planes a little bit, I think. So we're going to have to look at that. that. That might be a bummer. Um, I also got some recommendations that point out that once the logistics chip has come out, which in the last turn it came out relatively early, um, I should just be going full bore forward with the rest of my units and not care so much about the potential supply. And this is true because until the next logistics chip comes up, they're not going to be marked out of supply. So heck, we can be running way out in front and not worrying so much. And this is especially useful knowing that we're going to have turns where the Axis has initiative because we'll probably pick a movement chit and be able to move our HQs and other forces up to help reestablish those supply lines. So yeah, it, it's something I should, probably should think about more and, and look to see where we want to make our leaps. The only thing I'm cautious of is getting so far out that the, the excess number of uh, you know, Soviet units could surround them, isolating those Axis units, those Panzers, and then they're eliminated in the isolation phase, and then poof, there goes our spearhead. So I want to be careful of that, but, um, you know, that, that's just all part of the game, right? That's, that's the nature of this uh, operational game. Um, and then finally, you know, something that uh, Ted had also pointed out uh, in, in some correspondence was that, uh, though I've managed my HQs uh, in pretty good fashion, especially when we get to go again, I may have made um, some... Uh, unoptimal play, non-optimal play, with the first Panzer down here in the south. Uh, and he, he sort of rightly pointed out, I leveraged one of those uh, activations to gain a little bit of ground here, but I, I do have all these guys in back that are kind of useless for the moment, and I even last turn I knew that, and I had started pulling the HQ back so that I can activate more of these units in the future. Uh, but he had pointed out, you know, what I had done with that second activation previously, uh, or the, the activations that I had in the initial part of the turn, should have been used a little bit differently, either to, yeah, pull those units uh, uh, from the back earlier than, than I'm doing now, or sending some of these units further afield and snatching some more victory point hexes, or, uh, or just, you know, messing about in the rear. And, and that is valid. I think what my intention was at the time was to dislodge up here the Soviet forces, make it so that, you know, they can't... If they send reinforcements from up here, they're weakening the, the Moscow line, and by taking this area, I'm now putting all of these units down here at risk if I can snake out around them and cut off their supply. Now, uh, they are probably going to retain supply through Crimea, um, but I don't know, just, just things I was trying to think of at the time to totally just circumvent this mass of units, just go around them and capture the things we want to capture. So, uh, you know, non-optimal play, yeah, that's what we're going to run into here. Probably going to run into it some more. That's just the nature of the beast. Um, so looking then at turn four, you know, what, what are the things that we're going to be concerned with this time around? So um, we are no longer getting the doubled attack factors and defense factors as the Axis. So there goes a huge amount of our benefit. Um, so that's a problem. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. We got you know a couple of things that enable us to not be isolated yet. Um, technically, as part of the special rule, so I guess we can keep pushing deeper, but not getting our doubled factors is going to slow down our, our crunchiness uh, and, and stomping out Soviet units, so that's going to be a problem. Um, so, yeah, so some of those early special rules are, are now kind of going away, uh, and we're not going to get as much help. Um, 
in this turn. Uh, the, the weather, that's going to be part of our problem now. We, uh, we are at mixed. Um, I'll have to double check all the impacts of that, but for sure there's going to be some. Uh, we still got a little bit of time to work with. Uh, with the reinforcements that are coming on the board, again, there's going to be a whole boatload of Soviets and only some Axis, and I'll point out uh, some of the red units that are coming up. So uh, those red units are guard units, and there is a sort of little system on how they come onto the board, and it involves replacing units, and by replacing I mean like taking units and removing them from the game because they're being reconstituted into these guard units. We only get you know, like one this turn, I think. Uh, you see there's a couple more on future turns. Uh, it, that That's going to end up being sort of a big deal over time. And you can see, late in the game, I want to try to find a good example to show you guys. Um, some of these units are going to be very potent and very powerful. Um, Come on, let's see. I want to. I want to find a good one uh, to show you guys. So, here's a, a, a guard unit for. Let me zoom out so I can focus this. Uh, for turn 22, you can see it is a uh, tank army, and it has 14 combat factors with a Zoc. And 14. I mean, <laughs> the the strongest Axis units we've seen have had like maybe six, maybe seven combat factors, where some of these guard units are going to be double that just by default. Um, there's some other other good examples. So here's like, uh, here's a Soviet guard army, 14 combat factors with a Zoc, just happens to not be mechanized. So over time, those uh, uh, guard armies are going to start coming on. The, the red army will look a little more red on the map, uh, and they're going to be bringing a lot of power to, to the table, and that's going to be probably in the later phases of the campaign where the Axis is sort of on the retreat uh, after failing to knock the Soviets out of the war, and uh, those are going to be the, the major driving points of the Soviets are bringing so many combat factors to individual combats, um, and, and you know it's going to make some of the Axis units look a bit like these 1-4 Soviet units, I think, just because we'll be, we'll be bringing a lot of forces in. So... Uh, the Soviets are going to get a lot of reinforcements here. We'll take a look at that here in a minute. Um, obviously, they're going to be having to go into cities, and some of those cities uh, kind of far away from the main front lines. Um, so it's going to be kind of tough to say what we want to do with that. Um, I need to decide where I want the Soviet city defense marker to go. So right now, I had had it in Smolensk, which is currently surrounded and about to be isolated, and then we have uh, one in Odessa, which was going to be an impediment to the Axis advance. And I think both of these are pretty good, but what I don't want to have happen is have the Axis get to uh, Moscow and have Moscow not be um, covered by a city defense marker. So I kind of have to decide, do I think the Axis will be pounding on Moscow's walls by um, by the end of this turn, because if we wait, we can keep one in Smolensk, say, and if Smolensk is taken, then we'll just put it in Moscow. But if the Axis are going to get to Moscow uh, this turn, well, Smolensk is not, you know, if we take Smolensk as the Axis, okay, but will we be at Moscow? Um, in the meantime, I don't know. As long as we keep the city defense marker in Smolensk, it makes it harder for the Axis to just attack and take it, and will thus cause more casualties. And then the line will hold, hopefully, and then next turn, or really the end of this turn, we can move the city defense marker, you know, which may be now off the table because Smolensk is taken, we can just plop it in Moscow. And we just need to keep that up for a few more turns, and then all the uh, Soviet cities will act like real cities at that point. So... Just some interesting things we gotta we gotta figure out. Um, still, I think the strategic uh, situation for the Soviets is hold on for dear life, protect Moscow. Uh, if the Soviet or the Axis takes Moscow before the end of turn seven, then they are going to win an automatic victory since they have Kiev. So we need to hold that, hold Leningrad, delay the Axis in the south, and rely on the Russian winter to help us, and then. Uh, over time, again, the number of reinforcements and guard units and everything else 
will um, be a big help to us uh, in dealing with everything else going on. So, um, let's see, is there anything else to discuss? Uh, I think that's it. So this is a big, big long 15 minute intro. These intros are always super long and I can't help myself because there's a lot to discuss before the action gets started and even then things slow down. For me, as I work through the turn, you guys just end up getting little minute by minute snippets as I play. So that's sort of the look forward. We're going to get into it. We're going to see what happens. And uh, hope you enjoy this video uh, like all the others. So uh, I'm going to cut here. When we come back, uh, we'll be working our way through the sequence of play. Okay, just real quick, I want to talk about the Axis reinforcements and replacements. Uh, they didn't get much in the form of reinforcements, uh, except that we did get a nice boatload uh, boatload, but three uh, Axis armor units, which I threw all on the supply depot here. That's to reinforce uh, the south and to make sure that we have plenty of mechanized units in the south if we do eventually get to uh, the Baku oil fields. Um, and there's a whole bunch of clear terrain out here uh, where we can probably best make use of these Panzer units. So that's why I put them there. In terms of replacements, we got four uh, infantry replacements, so I topped off a couple of Zoc uh, units that were down here in the south over here. Um, there's like one of these, two of these units over here. And then I rebuilt some units and I did put them over here with the idea that they need to support the, uh, the bloody fight towards Moscow. Uh, we also got four uh, mechanized replacements. Um, I'm sorry, five. We get five. So I get to add one more that I didn't put on. I think. I'll do down here. We still have a couple of reduced uh, Panzer units that are uh, helping besiege Vitebsk up here, I think is what it is. Vitebsk. Um, but what I really want to make sure is that we've got uh, these guys over here topped off. So I spent the majority of those mechanized replacements down here. I also put some around the Smolensk area. So uh, I think right now we just have two uh, Axis tank units that are not full strength. That's okay. Um, they'll do fine without. But I'm sharpening up our spearhead. So that's it, that's it really for the Axis reinforcement and replacement. Uh, the Soviets are going to have a huge boatload, which I'll show on camera here in a minute. I will point out that we've got some motorized infantry in the Axis Eliminated box that I could have brought back um, with these mechanized steps. They have to be replaced with mechanized replacement steps, but um, I thought it would be better topping off our tank units because it's really the tank units that are the most useful in pounding and beating up the Soviets and creating those encirclements. So, um, we're just using our uh, resources the best way that we can. Um, so, okay, I'm going to switch over to the Soviet reinforcements, and uh, we'll take a look at that. Okay, so here are the Soviet reinforcements for the turn. A couple of things I want to point out real quick. Um, so, if, uh, and there, there were like one or two that I ended up removing, we do some withdrawals at the beginning of this turn. So, the single-step mechanized core units like this one as an example, these are all removed from the map. And I had destroyed most of them, uh, but they are withdrawn. Now that kind of sucks, right? Because uh, they were relatively useful units. They had Zox, they had all that good uh, combat ability. But instead, we now get, and I'll try to get them on screen here, uh, we get some tank markers instead. Uh, now, the way that those will be used is they can be used once a turn, so unlike the Axis Assault Guns, which can be used every round, these guys are just going to be used uh, once per turn to support uh, an attack or a defense. Um, these are going to be around until turn 10. They're useful to a degree, uh, a little bit of flexibility because we can plop them down as needed. Um, but probably... Not as nice as just having a whole bunch of units. Oh well, so that's one thing. This is sort of representing the change in the Soviet uh, Army's organizational structure where those mechanized corps, you know, the, the armor from that were being reorganized into brigades. We'll eventually start to see other units with uh, tanks uh, embedded in them, uh, like, the, like the tank armies, but that's to come. So we got those. We'll have to remember to use those of the Soviets. 
just like we will try to remember to always use those assets for the axis side, but again, they get two, and each can only be used once per turn, so there is limited ability there. But uh, let me get back to the reinforcements here. Okay, so we get three of these uh, non-replaceable uh, two-strength divisions, nothing to get too excited about. We actually get a very specific tank brigade, which is the Katukov tank brigade. Uh, it's mechanized, it's got four combat factors, but it doesn't have a Zok. So, I mean, really for our purposes, it's just a, a decently strong uh, unit, and it's got plenty of movement to, to get around. So we'll have to figure out where we think that will be most useful, maybe in the south. Um, just like the other turn, we get a whole boatload of army reinforcements, so these nice five-strength units with Zoks. Uh, again, uh, with the stacking, you can only have two armies per stack, uh, and so what we're going to end up having to do is spread these guys out a little bit amongst our cities. The south seems like a decent place to put some. Uh, we'll probably want to put some in Moscow if there's room, uh, and other cities nearby uh, like Kalinin. So we'll have to figure out where we think the best placement of those units will be. Um, and then we get our first Guard Corps, the 4-4. Now, the way this works is, uh, for units like this, the 4-4, uh, we have to, we have to, we don't have an option, we have to replace three infantry divisions. Um, and those infantry divisions can either be those on map, or, and assuming those units are in supply, or uh, units in the eliminated box. So, right now... <laughs> We had had a huge old dead pile here, you can kind of see, big old dead pile. I've already taken three units out of the dead pile so that we can place this uh, guard core. And so that was like an obvious move, right? We're going to get rid of the ones in the eliminated box, they're already eliminated, not a big deal. Now the only thing to keep in mind about that is, over time, we're probably going to keep replacing units that way, right? We're going to bring in more red units, we're going to get rid of stuff from the eliminated box. The only thing we just have to keep in mind is that when they're taken from the eliminated box as part of these replacements with the guard units, they're gone from the game. So I guess right now you could consider, well, we've got some depth charts, so to speak, because, yeah, we're losing units, but we can always bring those 1-4s back with replacement points later. Um, but we'll, we'll have less of them over time with these replacements. Uh, so I don't know, just something to keep in mind. But we're seeing, again, uh, one of the kind of neat features of this game, honestly, and I will see more of it as the game progresses, but... Um, What's really neat is seeing the shift in the Soviet army from, you know, the scattered bits of 1-4 units and 2-4 units to the mechanized corps being pulled away to form brigades, to the armies being raised and mobilized, to the guards being formed out of shattered Soviet units. It's just, I don't know, it's just really neat, kind of cool to see, uh, and we'll see that transition over time in the game. So um, all these guys are going to get to be put on the board as reinforcements. Um, I'll have to decide how I want to do it. Again, do the armies being so big, you can only put so many of them in a single hex anyway, so uh, we'll have to think through that. So I'm going to take some time off camera, I'm going to place these reinforcements, and then we'll move on. A again, I'll call out, uh, there are no replacements for the Soviets yet. That will kick in on turn 5, in which case then we're going to start looking at the different cities that have the factory icons that will give us a certain number of replacement factors to use to bring some units back from the dead. Um, but, again, that won't start until next turn, so we only have reinforcements for this one. Okay, we'll see you back here in just a second. Okay, so in terms of the reinforcements, I decided to put the Guardian up there in Tallinn so that it can delay uh, the progression to Leningrad. Um, it could be, you know, it's essentially going to be sort of bypassed and surrounded, but the uh, number of strength points there will be important, and because it, I believe it can still get port supply, those units might be able to last a little while. Um, uh, the other units I sort of scattered about. I topped off Moscow. Moscow's got a lot of defenders. We've got some uh, forces in Kalinin. We put another one in Tula. Uh, down in the south, we also threw in some units down here, uh, strengthening Zaporozhye and Stalino and Kharkov especially, got some units and didn't have any for. Uh, so again, just putting um, some units in places where the the Axis will probably eventually get to, uh, but they're going to have a hard time taking these cities. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, okay, so that is the end of the replacement, reinforcement and replacement phase. So now we're going to look to the... Uh, 
the air base phase. So again, like we've done other turns, we're going to move up our, uh, our aircraft bases and air units. This is going to be pretty straightforward, nothing too crazy. Um, so stand by and I will show what that looks like here in a second. Okay, so here we are with the air movement. So uh, our Northern Air Force, we're able to move up to that town and Tartu. I love that that was a sort, of, sort of an important grab with our units the previous turn because we did want to stage our air out of that town because it's got decent coverage uh, towards Leningrad. Um, there will be some better towns as we move forward, but for now that should help uh, for the moment. Then as we look further south, I, were, I was able to move uh, the Air Force up a little bit um, to, I just can't barely read that town, right there, as well as over here, similarly, getting closer. I um, want to make sure, I think I took this town over here. I'm pretty certain I did. Maybe that would be better. In fact, yeah, I, I think that actually is better. But it might not have been, let's see, they were in Minsk for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. No, we could do it. Okay. Um, so we'll move them all the way up there. So a slight correction. And that gives us plenty of air for air power in the immediate area for Moscow. Uh, we moved the one other air force up to Kiev. Similarly decent spot. And then uh, I put a unit on top. I probably shouldn't have done that. Here in uh, Vinitsa. Um, would want to maybe have put it up further, but we got to take some of these other minor towns. So, yeah, mostly good air coverage, just barely on the periphery in some areas. There is no Soviet air yet, um, but looking ahead at some of the reinforcements to come, uh, the Soviets are going to get some air units in turn six, but they are going to be more like the Romanian air asset where you just sort of throw it in. Um, I think it's like within a certain range of like a town which is not going to be an issue for the Soviets at all. So they'll, they'll get some air units, but they're not going to be quite the same as the air base uh, type units that we have for the Axis. At least not yet. I think they get one way later. Um, okay, and then let's see. We get to our strategic movement. Now, I'm pretty certain we can't quite do a whole lot of strategic movement yet. Uh, let's see. Turn 11 for the Axis. So no, uh, we could do naval, but I don't think there's any naval to really do. Um, okay, starting on turn four, the Soviet player may move four combat unit steps per turn any distance along in supply Soviet-controlled rail lines. Each hex must be moved through, must be a hex in which it would be in supply. May not enter an enemy-controlled town or city or fort, nor remove adjacent to an enemy unit at any point. Um, may be used to place units in stock, cover reserve, probably the units can move by rail. Oh yeah, we didn't put any reinforcements into the stock cover reserve. That's kind of interesting. Um, hmm. I'm going to put an army into the stock cover reserve that went into Stalino, because I think that'll be less likely to need it. And we'll just have one unit in, in the stock cover reserve, one army. That, that'll be good enough. Um, but we can move four combat steps any distance along rail lines. So we, we can move four steps. Are there any ones really worth doing? Probably, <laughs> I would think. Probably. Um, but we got to be careful. We don't want to leave our cities undefended if we take our armies out of there. Um, we have some units that really aren't quite on rails, and that's sort of an issue. Um, so what do we do? Hmm. <laughs> Tough call. Tough call. Um, we could use this to try to form a better line down in the south. And that might be useful. So, like, here's a unit. We rail him to here. That'd be one. Um, two, three, and then, uh, he's on a rail line, four. We just, we just sort of put a little bit of a screen up. I mean, you know, because at, at, at this point, I don't think there's any other better 
moves that I could easily make with the rail. Um, but that's a decent one just to kind of shift a little bit and create a better line north of the river, which is compromised position. I mean, those units are going to have issues anyway against the Axis. They'll probably get squashed, but at least being there is a delaying factor, and that's really just what the Soviets need to be doing. Um, Soviet naval movement. Uh, I don't think there's any that I want to do at this point. I think I've bumped up enough of my units in the ports that I could. And uh, no Soviet airdrop or transport I'm not going to worry about here. Um, so that gets us into the action phase, and we'll take a look at the, uh, the chits available for this turn like we usually do. Uh, the only thing I'll point out is that the Axis continues to have initiative here, but next turn they will not have initiative. The Soviets will. So we've kind of got to decide... Well, I guess, you know, there's not much to decide. We, we've got initiative. We're going to probably use it for movement, but next turn, knowing that the Soviets are going to have initiative, that could really matter when it comes to the, that logistics chip coming up. And I've still got to go double-check, you know, what are all the constraints on uh, our mixed weather here. It's going to be something I need to take a look at. So uh, when we come back, I will have the action chips for the turn splayed out, and we'll look, out, look at the potential actions for the turn. Okay, here are the chits for the turn. Uh, this is going to be very similar to the previous turn. So we have logistics as always, the move or combat chits for the axis, uh, and then a, the similar panzer lineup, so one, two, three, four, and then the first and second will get to go again, uh, or have the chit put back in the cup, have a second pull uh, for the turn. And I'll point out this is actually the last turn they get to do that, so in the future, we will simply get one activation for each of the Panzer armies, the first and the second. We'll no longer have the second pull, so I guess this sort of is going to incentivize me here to really push forward and try to um, try to go out and hit Moscow. So, so I can actually see some reasons why maybe we don't uh, we don't do a movement chit as our initiative chit. Maybe we do combat, try to clear Vitebsk and Smolensk, and then. Uh, leverage the the other activations to try to start banging our way to Moscow. It's going to be something to consider. For the Soviets, uh, the same as before, Stomka chit, a movement, and the counterattack. And I'd still say right now the counterattacks are probably not very advantageous for the Axis, uh, or for the Soviets, I should say. Uh, because they just don't have the strength composition to, to truly make um, successful attacks that will work very well. Um, it, it's just not going to work um, out for the most of the time, uh, and will simply thin out their lines even more than they're already thinned out, so uh, that's going to be the problem. Um, so knowing that we are going to have to pick our choice here as the Axis, um, I do think a combat shit would not be too bad of a start, what we'd really like to do is clear those cities uh, so that we have a, a, a better path forward to Moscow. Now the problem will be when the logistics chip comes up. If that comes up at an inopportune time, that could provide a major slowdown and a benefit to the Soviets. But again, if we can punch through and just get close to Moscow, that could leave us enough time uh, to knock it out um, within the last couple of turns here. The, the trick is going to be, you know, these last couple of turns, we're going to be hurting on the weather side, and these uh, next couple of turns are going to be basically uh, very much reduced in our activation. So just to show, let's see if I can get this on camera and show. So like, okay, we're in September now, but then for the rest of the year, we have October, uh, November, and then we have the December turn. So really, if we were just looking at September, October, November, you can see we get next turn three Panzer armies, two Panzer armies, and then just a move in a combat there. Um, so really not a whole lot to work with here. One thing that's kind of annoying as I'm looking at this chart right now is like, it doesn't tell you the turn numbers on here. So you kind of have to look and be like, oh, well, December... 41 through February 42, that's actually like one, two, three turns. Um, so you got to make sure you look at Okay, so for three turns, that's what we're using, not here's a single turn and here's what you got. So just watch out for that. 
Um, so far, it's been one turn per row, but then, yeah, you get into these couple where it's multiple turns per row. Um, so knowing that we're just, our operational capability is going to slow down, we really need to figure that out. I think in the future couple of turns, if it's like, oh, pick three Panzer armies, well, I think we're always going to be picking the Panzer armies that are in the lane for Moscow, because that's really our, our push point. We need to try to take Moscow. But the other thing is, we probably also need to be trying to get these other victory point hexes. So, I don't know. If I were to play it like I'm playing a Barbarossa scenario in earnest, I, I might be really trying to hit Moscow and get the auto victory for the Grand Campaign. Because that would be a victory. If we get it by the end of turn 7, uh, that's automatic victory. Game is over. And I'm not going to... I, I guess I wouldn't be playing the rest of the campaign. But if I don't take Moscow, and I don't get enough victory point hexes to continue in a 1942, then I guess Axis would lose. And then, you know, you and I would probably spend some time together covering uh, Fall Blau um, as I s set up the game again to play something different, though that's a, that's a whole other mess of stuff. So, um, I am going to ponder the options here, and then when we come back, uh, I will walk through whatever the first chit was and the results of that first chit. At this point, it is very likely either going to be a combat chit or the move chit or maybe one of the panzer chits. I mean, I guess that's, those are the only options, but I think there is merit to any one of those three options. So I'm going to weigh that, and then we will be back. Okay, so I decided to do the move. The attacks that I had set up on Vitebsk and Smolensk just aren't good enough to have done it right this second and so what I did is I did movement to pull uh, folks up uh, as as I could um, so you can see sort of in the north we're making some progress towards Leningrad over here we're gonna have a little bit of issues with these guys over here just because of the lack of, of uh, HQs because um, everything's sort of bundled up all around this so we've got you know areas that are cut off cities that are cut off We've started to progress some units up uh, towards the actual line for defending Moscow, so a lot of our Panzer units have moved up. Um, we've got a screen down here, and uh, we did take Gamel for what it's worth, so um, we just waltzed into there. It didn't have any defense in the south. Uh, you know, we sort of moved units forward, getting ready to bust open these lines here, uh, I suspect that this line here is going to collapse very quickly whenever combat comes up. And then down here, I'm, I'm starting to get those units pulled up. Um, there's going to be a few, uh, just because of where I could get the move to, that won't be in the HQ activation circle. But we started moving guys around. We started uh, wrapping some units around um, the uh, Odessa here. And actually, I think I meant... I wanted this guy down right here, so, oops, fix that. Um, so we're starting to create a little uh, pocket around Odessa, and that's about as good as it can get. Um, yeah, I was just, it's, it's a debate right now where to go and how to go and where to put them, so that, that's what I did uh, to the best of my ability. Um, you know, we're going to be going to the... Uh, chit next, and what is really going to matter here is what we pull. Um, I'm just double checking a couple of things here. Um, I'm double checking our mixed weather because I don't want there to be any major issues with that. Um, mixed weather gives a minus one movement penalty to mech and motorized units. Um, in all the cases where I moved those units, uh, they really didn't end up using their full movement anyway. Uh, so we're okay there. And let me see if there's anything else that we're worried about here. We can still provide air supply in mixed weather, so that's still good. Okay, uh, yeah, so that was it for the uh, the first chit, the movement chit, and we will go to the cup for the rest of it. So I'm gonna throw all the chits in the cup, all except for our extra 
first and second Panzer chits. Uh, they're gonna, I'm gonna set them up here. You're not supposed to put them all in the in the cup. Just as a reminder, they you set them aside, and when you pull the first Panzer, you know you can mark it with these markers on the track, and then you put in the the chit again, or you know whichever way you want to do it that way. But that's you, know, you don't want two chits in there. That throws off the odds ratio. Um, okay, so the cup is full. We're going to draw here in a second. I think I just heard the mailman, uh, so I'll be right back. Never mind. It was not the mailman. I'm still waiting on the mailman. Why are you waiting for the mailman, Steve, you might ask? Well, hopefully, uh, if the timing is right, as I am playing through this video, you'll get to see why I was expecting the mailman, and it is relevant to the Dark Series, so we'll, we'll see. Um, okay, so we're just going to go to the cup, and... Uh, We'll see what we get here. It'll be interesting. Um, logistics chip might not be bad. We'd like to cut some units out of supply. Um, here we go. All right. The pull. Whoop. The pull is uh, the Axis Combat Marker. Okay. Well, that is good and bad. Um, not bad because I think. We have a number of combats that uh, would be pretty useful at the moment, um, but, oh, yeah, there's, a, okay, that's an army. Um, we, we, yeah, we got some decent combats here uh, that, that might work out pretty well. Um, so, we will look to it. So, I think the obvious places for combat are going to be uh, up here where we can get some decent odds ratios and just sort of clear this whole area out, which would be nice. That would help clear our path and our flank. Um, up here, I don't think the combat strength I have near Talinan is great enough to attack there, so probably not going to do anything. Uh, we will entertain the idea of collapsing these cities, though um, I would have rather have had them out of supply so that we can get the bonus to attack, because otherwise it's just tough. What we need to do is force a retreat result, and uh, just due to the defenses and the force, a lot of it's just one-to-one -one ratio or two-to-one ratio, and, and re retreats are hard to get. Um, but otherwise, over here, we might have some combats to bust a hole through the line and uh, open things up towards Moscow a little bit, so that's going to be likely. Uh, and then over here, we should see uh, some units um, blasted apart here, uh, ideally, and clearing the way towards Kharkov and the continued collapse of the uh, Ukrainian front line here um, won't be able to bust it completely apart but we will likely clear some of these units out of the way so uh, I'm gonna take us off camera I'm gonna take care of all the combats when we come back we will have seen the results of uh, those combats okay here we are in the aftermath of the combat we managed to clear a couple of units up here which is helping our overall situation uh, in our city assaults here, uh, basically I attacked both cities, I, I leveraged air power, um, and I got basically both sides lose a step. Now, sort of a bummer, but it does reduce the units that are in the cities. So, you know, if we pull logistics and then they're out of supply and isolated, um, then we can hopefully get another attack when the second Panzer uh, HQ activates and we should be able to clear... Uh, clear the cities. So, kind of a bummer. I was hoping to do a little bit better, but I just didn't roll very well. Uh, it's too bad. Over here, uh, we got a slight opening of the line. I, I realized um, that my options weren't super great for busting open that line, but we at least have uh, punctured a hole there, and that will hopefully help us out here in the activations to come. Um, Further down the line, we cleared some units, uh, took out the reduced Soviet army, took a town here with, uh, I guess those are SS units probably, um, and we're able to move some units up here uh, for some activations uh, here. Um, and boy, come to think of it, I I need to maybe rewatch that video earlier because I may have may have forgotten to do attacks here. In which case, I'll do them here in just a second. I must have passed right over them because um, I think yeah they I didn't attack there yet. Gosh darn it! Okay, 
Uh, over here, we did knock some units out, and we're sort of entrapping, isolating unit there. The rest of the line is going to be probably encircled before too long. Uh, we made some progress towards Odessa. Now Odessa is kind of besieged uh, at the moment. Everything else is going okay. Um, so I'm, I'm going to stop recording here for a second, and I'm going to review my footage and just make sure I think I did not attack here yet, and I, and I should. Um, so I'll be right back. Okay, well, I didn't attack with those units, and now I just did, and I maybe didn't do so great. <laughs> I, I attacked uh, over here, and I got a both sides take a step loss, and so my tanks took a hit. Stupid. Stupid. Stupid Steve. Uh, but we did okay otherwise, and we actually have isolated, or will be isolating this unit in Lubney, which is an airborne unit, actually. Um, and so... Uh, that's pretty good. Not so bad. Um, again, we've got some other isolations around. So, yeah, okay. We, we did okay with that combat. Not as good as we could have. Now, uh, I'm going to stop the gameplay for just a second. And the mailman did come. The mailman came. Uh, and I got something cool in the mail. I, uh, via the ConSim World Marketplace group on Facebook, reached out and purchased a copy of a game. A game that's out of print currently. And that is Case Yellow, 1940, the German Blitzkrieg in the West by Ted Racier. Ah ha ha. This game came out, what, in 2011? It's been out of print for a while. I got it pre-owned by a guy online. Nice guy. Gave me a pretty good deal. Uh, the counters are punched. They are seemingly rounded or partially rounded. Now, the only thing is, uh, I have to validate that all the counters are actually here. He wasn't sure if it was complete. I suspect that it is. I mean, you know, unless he lost the counter and just didn't know it. Um, so I'll have to do some counter inventory, but I got this game, all right? Now, uh, what's the significance of this to the Dark Valley? Well, this game uses a chip pull system, not unlike the Dark series. And in many ways, though there are some differences in the rules because it's covering the, the uh, attack on Belgium and France uh, and the Netherlands, it's, it's almost a member of the Dark Series before the Dark Series was called the Dark Series because of the Dark Valley. So in some ways, it's sort of like an unofficial member of the family, if only a little bit of a prequel. Um, now, <laughs> you, you could, if you really wanted to, maybe uh, if you're a... a, a, a Smart Alec might say, "Well, hey, well, they we just call it the dark yellow, um, and uh, we'll leave jokes about dehydration uh, for later." But um, could call it the dark yellow. Uh, so it's sort of an unofficial dark system game, um, I guess. You know, maybe Ted can chime in and give his considerations. Maybe that game will be redone and called, you know, the dark something or other and be republished in the series proper, but um, I picked it up because I got a good price on it, and maybe in the future I will do some Case Yellow 1940 gameplay. Um, and, then, <laughs> and then we'll have uh, Case Yellow 1940, The Dark Sands, The Dark Valley, and then The Dark Summer when that comes out. So plenty of gameplay here. And again, that game uses a chip pool, very similar to, to this, uh, and... Um, obviously a little bit of difference, but it's going to be very close to the gameplay experience that we would have in terms of that uh, pulling chits, activating units, moving, attacking, the whole thing. So, yeah, the mailman came. I'm excited. Very cool. Okay. Uh, all right, so the combats are complete. We've made some progress. We've opened things up a little bit. We could even start racing off some of our Panzer units towards Kharkov at this point. Um, but it's going to depend on what we draw next. So, um, going back to the cup, we will pull, it is second panzer activation, okay. Um, so this is our first second panzer activation, the other one will go now into the cup, and right now, uh, I believe our second panzer is located right here in the center of our, let's see if I can focus there, in our city sieges, and I do think we need to use this opportunity to do an attack and then move. And so the objective here will be to launch an attack against the cities once more. We would have really liked to have gotten logistics, and maybe we will later if we don't take the cities, but this is really slowing us down. We want to be taking these forces east 
and shattering the lines towards Moscow. That's really what we need to be doing. But we need to clear these cities or else we're not going to be able to get the rest of our uh, supply uh, through. So uh, this has to take priority. So uh, I'm going to do the activation for the second panzer. Um, all of the units that are currently besieging the cities are in command uh, range for uh, what we want to do here. So it's just really going to be a matter of taking care of that stuff. Uh, so we will be we will be, we will be back. Okay. Well, the Axis got extraordinarily lucky with a pair of sixes on my combat rolls. We managed to clear Vitebsk and Smolensk and moved the great mass of forces up towards the uh, the line. Now, if things are a little congested, you can see, um, and we're going to hopefully be able to punch some more holes through. Uh, but now we've got some momentum going. We've still got some units that have been out of supply since the last logistics phase. They can't move as far, um, essentially. But we are making decent progress here now that we've cleared those areas. Um, our supply depots are going to be able to move up quite a bit here, um, should move be able to move relatively swiftly, and everything else is just good old peachy keen. Um, so, yes, I think we're in decently good shape, and we're going to keep on moving on here, uh, going back to the cup. But that was a very good activation. Uh, the HQs have moved up now that we should see uh, some pretty good... Um, activations when we pull the uh, the other chits. So, so far so good. Um, going to the cup, we're going to pull and we get uh, we get the third panzer. Well, third panzer is over here in the Moscow area. So we're going to get to activate a whole bunch of units over here now. Uh, now there's a little bit less of like excellent opportunity here because we're really going to be activating just sort of like this sort of southern part of our thrust towards Moscow. Um, but we should see uh, some panzer units sort of spring forward and uh, cut some guys um, possibly out of supply. Uh, that would be really cool. Uh, and we could be making a big march on Moscow here very shortly. I'm just not sure, like, you know, if, let's say that they activate and we go the distance, right? Well, like, what's the value? So if we did... One, uh, that would be three, four, five, six, seven. That's as far as they could go that way. I don't think that'd be that valuable. I think what we would want, want to do is snake out around here and uh, catch some of these guys out of supply, possibly. Um, so, okay, I'm going to take us off recording. As usual, I'm going to prepare... The uh, movement in combat, or combat in movement, I'm not sure which quite yet. And then I'll show the results of the third panzer activation. This will be the only third panzer activation, um, so we really need to make this one count. Uh, there's not going to be any more movement for these guys, and no combats after this, except for those that will be activated by the second panzer uh, HQ when they activate again. So we kind of need to just, this is going to be an important move to make sure we can keep up our, our progress here. So we'll be back. Okay, here we are after the third Panzer activation. Now, I am most definitely putting a lot of units at risk of being out of supply right now, and the logistics chit has not yet come up. You can kind of see I, I smashed my way through here and have sent units up, but I could not get far enough due to the forested terrain uh, in order to um, get sort of up and behind these guys to cut this entire pocket out of supply. So right now, as the Axis, I don't want to pull logistics. What I want is to pull the second Panzer. That way, I can try to smash my way through some of these units over here. Um, like right through here would be nice, and then I pocket all of these guys. Then logistics comes up, and then they're knocked out of supply, and then they will be um, basically isolated and removed in the attrition phase. So um, that's what I would like to have happen, but what I'm... Which probably not, it probably won't happen that way. The other issue is, like, I am way out ahead of my HQs now, and I don't want to move them any farther up uh, because they, the HQs themselves need to count back to uh, the um, supply depot to even give supply to the units that can get supply. So I'm, I'm taking a huge risk here, but we're, we're smashing our way to Moscow at this point. So, I, you know, maybe it's worth it. Maybe we want to get a clean auto victory. 
Um, but we're going to pull from the cup and we'll just see how foolish this was. If it's logistics, we're in deep trouble. And it's not logistics. It is the first Panzer and the other Panzer chit goes into the cup. So we are going to activate the first Panzer. And the first Panzer is way down here. And they're likely going to do uh, movement first because uh, there's not really any combats to take. So we're going to see a bunch of movement surge to the east and, and likely be in place uh, to face off against this line here. So uh, we'll be back when that movement is complete. Okay, so this activation was really mostly for moves. You can see I've gotten most of the units surged up. And on the next first Panzer activation, we're going to get to activate this whole lot here. And we should be able to get some uh, some major movements going here. Um, it, it is tough, like, having only the one HQ there to really activate and get forces moving um, kind of limits our ability to, to get a lot of things forward. But, um, you know, again, it's going to be... Interesting to see what happens. What we'd really like to do is, like, snake these guys out and down around if we could and, like, create a gigantic pocket. I don't think we're going to be able to do that at this point. It's too hard to get units all the way down and around there. Uh, but maybe if we get that first activation before the just... All right, well, we're going to be pulling the next chip from the cup. And we got Stavka. So, what to do? What to do? Well, we could throw in our... Oh, ah, gosh! Stupid Steve, stupid! The Stavka chit doesn't go in the cup. The Stavka chit is played on command. Well, ugh, gosh, I'm sorry about that. Um, well, at the moment, uh, I think we're going to hold Stavka in reserve yet. Um... Mostly because what what we want to do is snap surprise the axis with it. So I think we'll hold it back, and we'll just go back to the cup. Ugh, I don't I don't think there was any real good opportunity to use Stanka anyway. So uh, we'll hold it back for now. Um, pulling from the cup, we get the second Panzer. Okay, so um, we get our second Panzer before logistics, which means we've got an opportunity here to really bust some dudes up up above here. So. I will seek to do that uh, off camera here. So what you'll see is some activations over here, and we're going to try to cut all those guys out of supply. So we'll be right back. All right, so uh, we had combat and then move. We were able to clear some stuff out uh, and then move forward. Um, just double check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's as far as the HQ can really go. Um, so we, we we're taking another risk here, right? We're, we're surging some units forward. Uh, and I ended up doing some fandangling with the units that can flip and, and get the cores full strength again. But we're managing to isolate this stack and this stack, you know, this stack and this set of units, this po those pockets. They're, they're, those units are now isolated. So if we pull logistics, plenty of our units will become out of supply as the axis. But those sets are going to become out of supply as well. In fact, they will be isolated which means when the turn is over, they will go away. Now, uh, we've already played our two Panzer Chits and our third Panzer Chit and the move in combat, so that's as far as the line's going to get this turn, unfortunately, but we are now to the sort of rear line of defense of Moscow at this point, uh, and we can rock and roll with that. Um, now might be a good time to play uh, the Stavka Chit, but... Um, well, there's yeah. I don't know. It's gonna be t it's gonna be a tough call because what we need to do with the Stavka chit is it lets us get some units out of reserve, and then we can potentially activate some units. Um, let's do a quick little analysis of what what's the worth of that. Um, so we could get one army. We could plunk it down and, well, Moscow might be full. Moscow is full. We Now, Tula is full. Kalinin's full. Yeah, see, our problem right now is that all these places are full for Stavka. So, if we placed something, they wouldn't be able to get very far. Um, yeah, well, we don't want to... we got to lose it before we use it, so... Um, what we'll do is 
we will place Stavka, we will place the army, and we will place it in Ivanova. It's too far away to activate, but at least we got it on the board. Maybe I shouldn't even bother to put it in reserve in reserve, excuse me. And since we can't we can't put it in places that are already max maxed out. Okay, well uh, the Soviets still haven't gone yet. So when this logistics chip comes up is really what's probably gonna matter. Um, and by the way, we also are gonna be isolating this unit here due to Zox. So we we've, we've managed to do, I think, pretty good in getting uh, some units wrapped up here. So, okay. Pull in the next chip. And... What do we get? What do we get? Fourth Panzer. Huh. Looks like we're just... We're getting all good stuff right now. Um, so, Fourth Panzer, uh, I think, is the one up here in the north. Yes. And there's not going to be much to do other than try to get some more guys over towards Talon. So, I, Talinen, whatever. I'm going to take us off. And uh, we'll be back when that's done. It should be a pretty straightforward activity. Okay, so with this activation, this is actually pretty straightforward. Just move some units up, no combats, um, because we really just needed to get inventory around the city. Uh, but, yeah, well, you know, maybe it'd be better to leave this guy back. The, the thing about it is, like, we're trying to get an attack going, and the, the cities aren't full-strength cities yet. Um, but we need to take that city before we move on to Leningrad. So we're sort of screening our approach, but uh, we, need to, we need to remove that so that we can keep moving forward. Um, and it looks like I accidentally moved some stuff around here. There we go. All right. Um, okay, so going back to the chit. Now, there's only uh, the first Panzer activation the Soviet activations in logistics. So at some point, very soon, we're going to get logistics. I, I suspect it could be any second. Um, and if it is, then uh, that would probably be a good thing for uh, the Axis. So we'll see. So pull in the chit and we get a uh, counterattack. All right. So let's roll two dice. We got nine. Um, which would be nine counterattacks required, which, that's not great. That is not great at all. <sighs> yeah, nine counterattacks. Mm. Mm. All right. All right, nine. Nine combats. Well, let's, let's think about what's available here. Um, we could certainly move some units out of Moscow and try to plug those gaps, but then Moscow becomes undefended. Probably don't want to do that. We can bring some of the armies that are in the cities out and use them to attack. That's probably going to be worthwhile doing here. Um, keep in mind, I can't move them unless they're going to attack. So if there are units here that... Uh, You know, basically, if there, if there's, if I can't get to an enemy or adjacent to an enemy to attack, then I can't move them. So, so there's really only so many options uh, to do. But I think we've got some potential, um, some potential over here. Maybe we can get some attacks at some of these weaker units. We might be able to hit uh, a couple of the units around here and try to blunt their spearhead a little bit. Um, we can maybe do something with this mass of units down here, but my fear is these guys are going to get tore up, and that's just going to make it easier to get the axis over. Um, but as always, this counterattack shit, I mean, it's really not advantageous for uh, the, the Soviets. That's the problem. Now, uh, these units that are in the pockets, technically they still have supply, so we could try to make some sort of breakout, and the best one that I can see... It's probably right up here. If we knock that unit, you know, out due to retreating, that would open up a, su a supply line. But um, there's a lot of factors there, so there's going to be some problems uh, in doing that. Um, so that's going to be some some problems to deal with. Uh, so I'm going to have to sit back and work my way through these nine required combats. No matter what, we're going to end up losing some units, and that's just really bad right now with Moscow 
kind of under the gun here uh, before too long. So, uh, yeah. Um, actually, though, come to think of it, we, we probably can afford to bring some units out of Moscow because the Axis isn't going to get to go again this turn. So we could actually get those guys out of there and then on the reinforcements the next turn, plunk some armies down in Moscow. So, yeah, this actually might work out okay. Um, so I'm going to take us off camera. I'm going to take care of these counterattacks. Maybe we'll see some good counterattacks. We'll see what the uh, end result is here in a minute. Oh, man. Okay. Well, that those series of counterattacks were pretty interesting. I think I did well to mitigate the situation where I really only attacked uh, where I, I would lose maybe a unit anyway, uh, but still had the chance to remove an Axis unit, so that way I didn't just eat removals. So down here, you know, didn't go terribly well, honestly. Um, and around here, just uh, some no effects, actually. But here, boom, we restored supply to that salient right there, and we actually managed to eliminate a reduced uh, Axis core. You can't see that. I'm zoomed in too much, but... Yeah, so an actual Axis uh, core, which was reduced and I didn't properly cover, got attacked by some Soviet armies and actually got eliminated at the cost of one step for the Soviets, and they restored supply to that salient. So um, this actually could be a very crucial move uh, for the Soviets because now a lot of those units on the Axis side are going to be out of supply. So this, is, th this was really bad for the Axis, but I, I managed to find a weakness in my own assault when I switch to my Soviet brain. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back to the cup. There's really only a couple chips left. We get the, <laughs> the Soviet move marker. Okay. Um, so, interesting. The problem is a lot of those units in that salient are still tied up in... Uh, whew, still tied up in Zox, but... Um, with this move, we could actually uh, do some good here. So I'm going to take us off camera. I'm going to do the moves, and we'll see what happens when we get done. Okay, uh, nothing too crazy for movement. We're just sort of drawing back a little bit uh, away from the axis, trying to form some new lines of defense here, um, though it's all a little shaky. Um, and then, yeah, up here, I mean, this is just not good news. For the Axis. Um, I mean, they're close to Moscow, but they've just, they're going to have some major supply problems here. Um, yeah, it's not going to be good. Um, okay, so next shit is actually logistics, which means that the first Panzer second activation will go after logistics. I'm going to have to go through and very carefully apply the out of supply and isolated markers. I will be back when that is complete. All right, well, here's the aftermath of our supply problems. So we've got uh, the one unit east of Talinin is actually out of supply. Can't quite trace far enough, I don't believe. Double check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, no, wait, it's fine. My bad. Um, but then, obviously, we've got issues down here. We can't quite count far enough because we moved so f many units ahead of our supply our HQs, and we didn't move our HQs because they were sort of at the limit of their supply path anyway, which is the, the real challenge here. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and that salient there are all safe for supply because they can count, you know, uh, you know, one, two, three, four to a rail line. Um, so very, very tough break there. Uh, down here, we had one unit that was just a little bit outside supply range. And we'll have to look at doing um, air supply here in the final phase of the turn uh, when we get there, anyway. Um, and then just sort of down below, uh, nothing too crazy, right? So things could have been better. Um, the Soviets basically getting supply back to the uh, the salient, I mean, that was kind of, that was really huge, and, and had that not happened, I mean, geez, um, oh boy, yeah, that's going to be tough, uh, and we did end up, over the course of that counterattack, I forgot to mention by the Soviets, we did end up having to use some, uh, some German air to provide some defense con con ground support, 
um, and that ended up using them up. But we still have a few that should be able to provide some air supply uh, to some of these units. So fingers crossed that we can do that. Um, oh, what a what a what a situation. Um, okay, so logistics is complete, and now we're going to have our first Panzer activation. That's going to be down here in the south. Basically, everyone's going to be in supply for that activity. So I will come back uh, when that is complete. Okay, so at the end of the uh, activation, we were able to move a lot more of our forces forward. We were even able to get... We got a combat that forced some guys back. We didn't eliminate anything. But you can see we're, we're really threatening those Victory Point cities that are nearby. And we're also threatening to collapse the salient here and, and potentially get some guys out of supply. So we're in pretty good shape there. Uh, the Panzer HQ has been moved up so that when it activates next time, it will be able to activate a bunch of units. They can do their thing, and then we'll move the HQ down here, and when it activates at some point in the future, it can move forward. I think the problem is now that we won't get to activate it multiple times in a turn, we just have to be really careful about where the HQ is, but I think I want the HQ further up here because we want to smash this way uh, more so than just worrying about down here. We can hold that in place for a bit um, and wait for a regular combat chest to, to show up. Show up. Um, okay, so uh, that's it for all the activities. We're going to do the depots. Fortunately, most of our depots have a pretty uh, fantastically clear path that they can follow to move up. So we'll do the, uh, the rolls for that. So we'll start in the north and we'll work our way down. So the very north supply depot, uh, we will roll for. Um, it is mixed weather, which means we're rolling on a different uh, category, which could mean we don't roll go as far as we would like to go. Uh, so roll a three. That means only three hexes. So I'm going to do one, two, three to move it that way. That way we have um, a, just overall more supply projection out over here. Uh, then going down to this one. Uh, that's in Dvinsk right now. We'll roll. Roll the six, so it gets to move six. Um, do one, well, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, I guess. Um, so we'll do that. Uh, now for the one near Minsk. Zoom out a little bit, so you can see better. Uh, so this guy, hopefully we roll well. We need to roll well here. Um, we only rolled a three. That's not good at all. So one, two, three. Oh man, that's not good. That is not good at all. Oh man. Oh, that's gonna be a problem. That's gonna be a big problem. I almost want to re-roll re it because it's so bad. Oh well. All right. Well, that's that's the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. Uh, and then down here for the uh, southern southern one. So we'll do the one near Kiev. We'll do the roll. Uh, manages to get five, which, gosh, I don't even need it that much. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, into the one back here, past the genometer. And we get six. Uh, so let me see here. I think we want to do down this way. So one, two, three, four, five, six. End up right back where the other one was. Uh, this one doesn't really matter what we roll. I don't think. We rolled a six. God, it's like it doesn't even matter. Um, I think we just do one, two, three, four, and then pretty much everybody's in supply down there. And then the last one down in Romania gets to move five. Doesn't really have anywhere to go. Uh, so we'll simply move it here. Um, well, I don't know. So. One, two, three, four, five. Let's do that. And then we've got plenty of supply all over the place. Um, okay, well, that's it for the supply depot. And now we need to look at German air supply. Um, I, I'll point out that there is a unit up here that is marked out of supply but would normally be isolated, this stack right here of German units. They're not isolated because the special rule is still in play for turns two through four, that all out of supply mechanized units treat isolated as out of supply during turns two through four, and these are both 
uh, mechanized units. So that, that is still the case. Um, okay, so we're going to do our air supply segment. Um, hopefully, uh, we can actually get some ply out to some of these guys, but I think we've got some problems. During the logistics round of any fair mixed weather turn in 1941 only, so that is the case, out of supply mechanized units anywhere within range of available air units may be given air supply. Um, ooh, although isolated German mech units are treated as out of supply for attrition purposes on turns two through four under rule 1712, this kind of air supply may never be given to isolated German mechanized units. So I can't get air supply to those units that are right here. I just can't do it. Um, an available air unit may supply up to six mechanized units in range and is not to its done side. And I think my problem is I may only just barely be able to provide supply to some units. Oh, that's going to be rough. But no more than six German mechanized units in total may be supplied in this manner per logistics round. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to figure out what we can do here because we may have some limitations because our only available Air Force that's going to be able to really provide supply where we need is this one, and that's, mm, I think, out of supply or like out of range. So let me see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so we can get some of these guys. I'm going to take us off camera, and when we come back, I'll show who got air supply. Okay, so here's where I was able to get supply, managed to still have some range. I did six units in five places. Um, keep in, I gotta keep in mind that in some of these stacks are infantry, but the supply is for mechanized only, so technically uh, in some of those stacks there are multiple units, but only the a uh, mechanized unit has supply. This is important so that during the next turn, um, assuming we survive whatever the uh, Soviets pick as their first chit since they have initiative, um, I, I want those mecha mechanized units to, to be able to operate with full capacity uh, to smash some of these units and maybe recreate some of the pockets or force back some of the other Soviet units. But gosh, I'm telling you, them them getting that salient back in, in the supply, I mean, that just, uh, that's just the real killer out here. Um, oops, I left a couple of markers out there to show the supply extent that I could get. Um, yikes. Okay, well, air supplies over, and now we go to the attrition segment. So, um, as it stands right now, uh, just FYI, Odessa those surrounded, sort mostly, has port supply. Um, so they're going to be nice, fine, and dandy. Um, all these guys are okay, okay, okay. Uh, this isolated unit goes away, which was an airborne unit. He's gone. I never used him effectively. Um, out of supply out of supply, um, not quite uh, isolated because of the ability to trace a, a um, what do you call it, line of communication. Uh, these guys over here are isolated and will be removed, so we were able to get some out of here. I believe the whole stack goes. So it's not all bad, but we didn't get exactly what we wanted, which is the ability to get even closer to uh, even closer to Moscow. And then finally, we did have this isolated guy over here. He's going to go poof. And there goes an unreplaceable unit. So um, zooming out for a second, here we are at the end of turn four. You can see we, we made some progress. We collapsed some of the cities we needed to get through, but as we approach uh, Moscow, things are getting tight, and the Soviet armies that have come on the board 
are doing a much better job of holding the line and hurting the Germans. Down in the south, uh, we're making some progress, and depending on how that goes, we could, in theory, uh, smash our way through, and, and maybe we could even entertain the idea of taking um, some of these important areas for oil victory. So, you know, we'd need Stalingrad, we'd need Grozny, um, Mykop, a couple other places. Uh, but we can at least entertain that idea, <laughs> uh, as it stands. Um, yeah, in terms of victory segment, um, let's see, if I was at 14 victory points at the beginning of the game, how many have we picked up? Um, so this would be 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21... I'm only at 21. For some reason, I thought we had more than that. I might have to recount here somewhere along the way. 14 at the beginning. Oh, I didn't count Lvov. Okay. 23. 24. Yeah. 1, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, maybe we are only at 22. I think I'm screwing up something. Maybe I thought I had an extra one and I don't. Um, hmm. Okay, maybe it is at 22. Well, we've still got a long way to go here before the, uh, before the end of the year. Um, we can get Krivoy Rog. Uh, we could maybe get Zaporozhye and Dnepetrovsk. Ugh. Uh, maybe even Kharkov. So there's some areas that are certainly within reach, um, but it's going to get harder to make the gains that we need to make. So we'll see what happens here. Um, so victory check, blah, 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 turn advance. So we'll be going into turn five. We'll get our air back. Uh, we'll be moving it, of course, when we get to the beginning of the next turn. Um, and I think that is it for... Turn four. Um, now, I think this video is probably pretty long, so I guess I'm going to end it here. We'll look to check out turn five uh, to come, uh, and we'll keep on rolling through the game. I did use, uh, just FYI, um, I did use the Soviet tank brigade markers in a couple of places. Uh, I think for the city defense markers, um, just to hedge our bets here, I think we'll have that go into Moscow. Just, just for the sake of it, and, you know, so we don't uh, have an automatic loss. We want that to be as strong as possible. Um, so, yeah, things are progressing, but uh, we didn't make the gains we wanted to. We, we were very close to uh, knocking out more units than we did, and now, uh, well, we'll have to see what is to come. Um, so, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, hit like. If you'd like to see more content and want to continue watching the series, hit subscribe. Um, yeah, see more content like this. Uh, getting tired here. Um, and yeah, we'll catch you next time for turn five. Winter is setting in, and the Axis is maybe in trouble. Catch you next time.